F N N. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good day, folks. Welcome to the May 13th, the uh, Friday, the 13th edition of today's Trader's Edge show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. And the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past one o'clock in the afternoon, although today it's just past eight o'clock in the morning. So if you are listening live, we would love to hear from you. If you're listening in at the normal time frame, I'll do everything I can to make this show as pertinent for that uh, segment as well. We'll be back to normal programming on Monday. So you can give us a call if you're listening live at uh, eight, between 8 and 9 in the morning, East Coast time at 877-927-6648. If you can't call them but you're listening in, you can always send me an email. Send it early. Send it to Steve at TFNN.com. Inside that subject, and if you'd be kind enough to put radio show question, that would be great. And, of course, inside our Tiger's Den, well, Andy Ping will do. And good morning to you, Peter, as well, from Park City. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Fantastic Friday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to Lush Show. Right now, we've got all U.S. equity futures trading to the upside. Dow's up uh, 1%. That's 314 points. 2% 2 for the NASDAQ, 233 points. 1 and 4 tenths for the S&P. That's 54 points. And the Russell's up 1 and 3 tenths, or 23 points. If we take a look at what went on around the primary markets across the globe, or it, I should say, really, if we just take a look at the uh, Shang, uh, the Asian markets, meaning the Nikkei, the Shanghai, the Hang Seng, and we take a look at what's going on in Europe between the FTSE and the DAX, everything trading higher. So odds favor that today should be a uh, higher, a, a close, a, a, a positive close for the U.S. equity futures. If they're not, boy, that's just uh, just telling us uh, more about the uh, about this uh, market that we're in right now. Gold is off 12 bucks right now, trading 1812. Silver's down nine pennies. 2068 is the print there. You've got light sweet crude trading up a buck 79. 107.93 is its print. Natural gas up seven cents, 781. You've got the 30-year Treasury off uh, one and about one and a half points, trade down at 139.14. Uh, but what does all that mean? You know what? I think just for the quick, easy summary of it, we'll go to our nine-panel market update chart. The nine-panel chart, we begin by taking a look at the ES Mini in the upper left-hand side. The ES Mini, you'll see, has an A to B equals CD down pattern. And if we get a bullish reversal candle today, that will actually go ahead and generate a buy the D point pattern. So what does that mean? Well, that means that you'd have a bullish signal that would suggest that price would move higher. The question would be, where's gonna, where would price move higher to? So that's a great question. We're going to try to answer that for you, and we're going to answer that in a couple of different ways. First, um, there's a new profile that is attempting to form. So I happen to have, I'm fortunate enough to have this little advanced Doppler tool that identifies profiles as they are attempting to form. So it's a really early warning indicator. Now, the unfortunate thing is I don't get confirmation of these profiles until the next session. So in this case here, it'll be Sunday evening at uh, 6 p.m. But nonetheless, we use the data that's available to us. So as we speak right now, you've got support at 38.99 and resistance at 41.23. Support being the bottom of the profile, resistance being the top of the profile. So now if we get a confirmed by the D point, and you would ask me, where is price going to target? Well, one of those levels that it would target would be the top of that profile, 41.23. The next level that it would target, and I'll just change the screens here momentarily, just so you can write this down in your pad of paper. And that would be its oscillator and change line. And so for the ES Mini, it should be in your upper left-hand panel. That's going to be at 40.37. So the price range at this stage here, based upon today's candle, but the day's not over. We're just really beginning the day. But what we are doing is we're just uh, saying, hey, let's take a look at what went on around the globe out there. Those markets moved higher on a Friday. 
Perhaps that's a signal that the U.S. markets will do the same. And so, therefore, the targets become that oscillator and change line of 40.37 to 41.23. That's in the case of the ES Mini. Let's go back to the uh, charts here, the, uh, the black background charts, my market update charts. And as we do this, what we're going to see is the spot volatility index is right now trading below the top yellow line. That's a Bollinger Band. That Bollinger Band is set at 50 to 1 from a ratio. I think a, this 20 to 2, I think, is a normal Bollinger Band settings out there. Regardless... Um, what this tells us is that if we get uh, so this is giving you you know potential trades here for you to consider day trades or what have you if we take a look at uh, if the ES mini is going to form a buy the D point pattern and price is going to make a rally up towards that 4123 area we should see the spot volatility continue to decline and this price target would really be its 50 day exponential moving average that's currently printed at 2717 the NASDAQ doesn't really have an A to B equals CD to the downside. Now, I say that, but I'll expand out the chart here. I'm sure that we can find a small A to B equals CD pattern. And that would look like this. So the A point out here, that's along the C to D leg. So I would use the high from March 29th. I would use the low from uh, April 18th. And I would use the high, looks like it came in two days later, on the uh, 20th. And you can see there, you've got a 1 to 1.618 A to B equals CD pattern. You've got a bullish reversal candle as we speak right now. You also have a new profile that is attempting to form here. Bullish in structure, and what I mean by that is the center of the profile. That's where buyers and sellers believe that price is fairly valued with inside the range. The range is established by the top and the bottom of those profiles. If price can close above the center, that's at 12,248, then its message is that price should be able to make a run up to the top of the profile. So that's a 12,995. Now, I'm not going to switch back over to the other charts out there. I did that the first time so you could understand where I was grabbing these numbers from. They're not just being pulled out of uh, you know thin air. And so the range for a bounce or resistance it's going to be between 12,381 and 12,995. Now, it's a pretty wide spread out there. But if you do get a close above 12,381, that's going to be the message that price is likely going to make its way to 12,995. Now, do remember that this profile will not be confirmed until Sunday evening. But it's still good data, and we go ahead and we use that. Now, if we switch down to the U.S. dollar index, what it did yesterday was it took out a TD nine count pattern. And that was established about two weeks ago. And that suggests that price should move higher. Your question would be move higher to where? Even though it's pulling back just a little bit this morning. So if we take a look at our U.S. dollar index charts out here, as soon as I can find them, here we can see a number of different things. You see what's going on a daily basis. We already talked about that. The weekly base, you trade above a key swing point, which was 103.56. You close above it last week. You close above it this week. It's a confirmation of a breakout. So then we take a look at... <coughs> we take a look at the A to B equals CD patterns. And the one-to-one -one price projections get us into the 109 area. So 109 in essence, is the longer-term price target. Can't tell you when price is going to go up there, but that's where the U.S. dollar index should head to. So, folks, we get back from this break. We'll continue to take a look at this market update, go through those. We'll start going through the details of the equity future contracts. And, of course, anything else that you'd like to, just give us a call at 877-927-6648 or send me an email like Hector just did at steve at tfnn.com. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN. Educating investors.
Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. So let's go to our first question from Hector. And Hector writes, and he wants us to take a look at uh, Google and get a feel for where it's headed to. So we've got the uh, black background screens up on our chart here. And what we can see is Google's trading below the bottom of its bullish structure daily profile. So the very first thing is on any bounce, we know we're going to get a bounce this morning here, is uh, where are the price targets to the upside? Where's the resistance levels? Because Google closed below for more than two consecutive sessions below the bottom of bullish structured profile, a counter trend move. And right now, that's what we have to anticipate that that's what this is. Would find resistance between 2337 and 2375, and 2375 being the real key level there. If, in fact, price can overcome that, well, then that says this may may be more than a counter trend move, or at least the counter trend move would extend itself up to the 2488 level. So that's what the daily time frame chart shows us. There is an A to B equal CD to the downside. No bullets reversal candle um, yesterday. Um, don't know that we'll really get one today here. And the weekly's got an A to B equal CD to the downside. And in order to load up your wagons, you'd really like to see a bullish reversal candle, a completed Gartley buy pattern, Hector and Patty, on the weekly time frame. And uh, don't know that that's going to happen uh, today. Doesn't mean that, uh, you know, this is not going to bounce. In fact, I, I would think that it would. So let's switch over to our other charts, see what other signals you and I can pick up on. And the very first signal that we'll pick up on as soon as the daily chart here populates is that we will see that yesterday, uh, yesterday's move took us into wave number seven. That's letter G. It's a very small part of the Chapman wave toolbox out there. <laughs> And when we get to uh, letter G or wave number seven, which, by the way, cannot be confirmed until you have a higher low, we're likely to get that today. Right? Google should be trading to the upside with the uh, uh, NASDAQ futures up 2% right now. Is it 2% that they're up? I think so. And uh, so you do have wave number seven. That is a bottom signal. So the daily, again, just tells us, hey, watch for the – well, let me just see where Google is actually trading at the moment. Give me a moment here. Get over here, see what, what we're doing in the pre-market. That might even so we're 2304. So 2304 takes us over the oscillator and change line. When you're a <coughs> when you're above a red oscillator and change line, just tells you you've got more counter trend move likely in it. So what what nothing changes here, you've got the 2337, 2375 level. Just see if there's anything else out here that's worth pointing out to Hector and Patty and anybody else that's listening. 
Not really. Um, you've got uh, a couple of different uh, intraday bottom signals, but th those don't mean anything to us as we speak right now. So, Hector and Patty, I hope that that helps you out. And watch that uh, 2337, 2375 area. And thanks for getting up so early and writing in. Much appreciated. We've got a caller on the line. Let's see, who do we have here? We've got Brent in Martinez, California. Brent, thanks for calling. Thanks for waking up so early. How are you this morning? Well, I'm doing great, Steve. I have to say thank you for you know being such a trooper and being doing your show for the last uh, several days when you I know we're not feeling so great yeah but uh, you know my dad taught me that if you want to play which I haven't done yet you've got to go to work first so so uh, I, <laughs> well, I would like for to doing that appreciate yeah, it. no problem I mean what about, <coughs> except for the hacking part which I hate people hearing in the uh, their eardrums out there it's it's doable but anyways let's uh, let's get to what would you uh, you're calling about the spot vix is that or the vix itself yeah you mentioned it earlier my uh, question about it was so not mistaken on wednesday and thursday we had well definitely wednesday we had a negative day yesterday you know more or less negative and yeah. we still had uh, the vix down yes so there was a bit of a divergence there i just wanted to get your thoughts on that and what that might indicate yeah, so it's a great question. So I'll pull this uh, chart up here momentarily. And I, and the answer is, I don't know how to interpret that. <laughs> uh, other than the fact that the spot fix index is dealing with, uh, you know, the anticipated move 30 days out. So the lower left out, let me just expand out this chart up here. So for, for the moment, and this is the spot volatile index, which is in the upper um, section here. And so about over a week ago, in fact, on the May the 4th, we're at May 13th. On May the 4th, the parabolic SAR, that's a tool that Garo uses, many others use out there, started forming dots up at the top. And that's an indication that, okay, a top for the spot volatility index should be in. You can see other instances out here on that parabolic SAR. I know the dots are kind of small out there, but you, hopefully you can see them on uh, Tiger TV out here. So that has been an indication that uh, instead of the, even though the VIX was, you know, moving up and down or what have you, this is giving us a signal from a momentum standpoint, and I'm not an expert. I'm, I'm, I'm far from an expert on the parabolic SAR uh, tool out there. But this does suggest that um, it wants to move lower. And then today's candle session, if we get this by the D point pattern, then that should be enough, and especially because we have this new profile here. And if it does take hold, that should be, and by the way, it's a bullish structure profile on the ES Mini, Brent. And what that means is the center is at 39.89. If we get it, we're 39.81 right now. If we get it close above 39.89, odds favor making a run for the top of that profile. And so if we get that outcome, then what we should expect or anticipate is spot volatility to pull back to or towards its 50-day exponential moving average, which is currently printed at 27.17. And as you know, if price were to close below that level, well, then we'd be have then we'd have even more rally to go. But I don't know what that more rally to go would mean in the S&P 500 or the ES Mini until we get to that stage out there. So my readings are I don't know the day to day. Hey, in a spot volatility index that was uh, traded lower yesterday, the markets, um, you know, did what they did. Does that? I, I, I don't know if I provide any more clarity to you or not, um, but it's all that I've got. Yeah. yeah, I'm just I'm kind of thinking that we because of you know the damage that's been done, we'll get some kind of a bounce. I don't know you know what it's going to consist of, but and that's what's going to be another question I was going to ask you: Are you more in the camp that we could get some kind of bounce, and that would be once you get to you know maybe the levels you're talking about on the VIX and it holds, then that would be the place to sell it again? Or what's what's your thoughts on it? Yeah, I would think so. Yeah, I would think okay. the, the this, this, look, the sell would be at least at least with regard to the, the sell from the standpoint, let me, I, I messed up here, give me back these charts here. The sell would be, the ideal sell setup would be the ES Mini gets to the top of its profile. Let's assume right now it's 41.23 and the spot bill of Tunix trades right to the 50 day exponential moving average. Then at least you'd have the technical indicators to say, okay, now it's time to short. You take the short. If that doesn't work, you close that trade out pretty quickly. All right. Yeah, that's, but, that's fair enough. But, but to answer well, your question. You so much. Yeah, that, that sure. answers my question. I just, I'm leaning towards we're going to get some kind of a bounce here. And to what extent it's going to be, we'll, we'll find out. Yeah, and that's really the message. And that's the last thing I was going to point out to you because it's a great question. 
And so uh, if we take a look at the New York Stock Exchange, the advanced decline oscillator, it's down in the minus 168 level. That's in the oversold condition area. It's been there for obviously several days. But should we get a bounce out of here? Should it work off that oversold condition? Absolutely. And with the international markets uh, closing higher on the day going into a Friday and a weekend, um, I wouldn't be surprised that uh, the uh, that the uh, rally that we have not that we won't see some selling. We should see some selling, I would think, but that the rally should uh, unfold through the rest of the day. All right, Brent. Yeah, well, it'll be interesting. We've been like we've had big one day rallies, but then that's petered out. So we'll see if it can string yes. together more than just a single day. Yes, yes. All right. Hey, oh, thanks again for okay. getting us. You bet. Thanks for getting up so early, and uh, we'll look forward to speaking to you again soon. That was Brent in Martinez, California at 526 in the morning. you got to love that. We'll be right back. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tigers Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TF. TFNN.com. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. On the air, just a note to the production room. I've got no sound uh, coming through my ears out there. Uh, not that you're gonna, I'm gonna hear anything right now, but uh, for the commercials and so forth. So there was a question inside the Tiger's Den. I don't know if it was a question, but uh, it was uh, has Russell 2000 bottom. So I'm gonna go ahead and get those charts uh, to populate up here um, on the white background screen. It shouldn't take uh, too long. Uh, what I will share with you while those screens are populating, if you give me a moment, there are new profiles that are also attempting to form there. So for those of you that are trading the Russell 2000, what you would like to know 
is that there is support or should be support at 1723. Now, that's in the equity future contract. It is in a bullish structured. Well, the profile that it's attempting to form is a bullish structured profile. And as you heard me say, that when price trades above the center of that profile or closes above, I should say, that that's an indication that price will make a run for the top. Well, as we speak right now, the center of that profile, in fact, let me do this. Let me switch back over to that screen and show it to you. Then you'll have that. You may want to grab the screen. And I'll just simply expand the screen out here so that you're just looking at the Russell 2000. And there we go. So now you can see that new profile out here. Again, the profile will not confirm until this evening. But we are trading above the center, which is 1748. So that's a suggestion that price is going to make her move to the 1799 level. Now, the question is, has the uh, Russell 2000 bottomed out here? When we take a look at uh, pattern. So we, in order for me to be able to say that it's bottomed, I'm looking for a specific pattern. That does not mean that the patterns that I use are at every single bottom in a market. It's just these are the patterns that are most likely to be um, in place that would help us identify a top or a bottom. And here we've got a very large A to B equals CD to the downside. And so kind of going back to my conversation with Brent here. Yeah, this really looks like more of just a counter trend move or some type of solid bottom, at least at this stage of the game here. Because we take a look at the NQ has got further. Uh, yeah, I came up with an A to B equals CD to the downside within the C to D leg. And so I can do that exact same thing here with the Russell 2000. So let's do that. The A point in the C to D leg would be the March 29th high. The B point out here would be the April 12th low. And the C point would be the high from April 21st. And so here you've got a one to two A to B equals CD pattern in a C to D leg. And if you were an owner of the art of timing the charts out there, uh, that would do There's some page out there that'll tell you if you do a one to two A to B equals CD, you're gonna do something else other than move lower out there. So from that standpoint, yeah. Now in, in that level, that A to B equals CD pattern, if price were to get above the top of the profile, which right now we believe is at 17.99, then we just simply take a look at some retracement levels. I'm not going to do that right now because that's not the pattern that's in play. But to answer the question, whoever asked it, by the way, has Russell 2000 bottomed out here? Yeah, I think we've got a short-term bottom. Now, if we go back to the uh, to the multi time frame charts out here, specifically for the Russell, one of the things that we like to see. Are bottoms on the intraday time frames. You especially like to see it on the larger time frame. So for example, we don't have a bottom on the daily, but then the next largest time frame that I would use from an intraday period is the five hour chart or 300 minutes. And that did form a TD9 count bottom. And so now price is just gonna deal with resistance. Resistance for it. <coughs> resistance for it is 17, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> 1763. And we're at 1762 basically right now, 1761.40. So if price begins trading above 1763, <coughs> that tells us price should at least be able to make a move to 1792. And 1792 is its TD9 count breakdown level. And if price can clear that, then that's telling us about getting to 1799. So really 1799, 1792 is really the price target. You've got bottoming signals on the 240 minute chart, on the 120 minute chart, the 60 minute chart. Did we have anything out there? Probably an A to B equals CD pattern to the downside. The 30 minute chart roads momentum indicator bottom as well. And, and then another price target, by the way, to the upside, I should say, another resistance level is at 179060. And that's the red daily oscillator and change line. So to answer the question, has it bottomed? It's at least bottomed so that we should see a bounce out here. And uh, so that was a Russell. We've taken a look at the ES Mini, I believe. Let's go take a look at the indice out here. That's truly gotten trashed and thrashed. And that would be the NQ. And so with regard to the NQ, let's go back and forth just so you can see what it is that we're taking a look at out here. Give me a moment. And much like we just did with the Russell 2000, as we expand out the uh, NQ chart out here, I guess we have to go type in the... Uh, so first, let's take a look at its new profile. Now, this is interesting. It's a rather large profile out here. So bullish in structure, again, support being 11,875. If you were to see a close below 875 today, and let's say you took a, a day trade uh, out there and you're in it, or maybe you were thinking of maybe taking this for a couple of days or what have you, if you see a close below 11,875, 
it's probably a good idea to close out that trade. I don't think that's what we're going to see today, but what I think, it doesn't really matter. It's what does the market actually do. But that's your level of support. Now, the center, which can be resistance, would be at the uh, 12 248 level. But if price can close above that, and assuming that the profile takes hold Sunday evening, that would be a signal of a move up to the 12 995 level. Does that mean we are at a bottom? Well, when we take a look at, do I have a bottoming pattern? Now, this is going to be an interesting way for me to answer this question here. Um, first, if we take a look at the A to B equals CD pattern, I'm drawing that in the screen right now, you'll see that it hasn't completed its price target. Its price target would be 11,445. And I think we're, yesterday's low is still a little bit too far away from that to really suggest that even if we get a bullish reversal candle today in the NQ, which is easy to do, by the way, you know, very odds favor we're going to get a bullish engulfing candle, that that was the completion of a pattern. Now, like we were able to do with the uh, a Dow equity future or the Russell equity future contract out here along the C to D leg. There's an A to B. You know, you can get A to B equals CD patterns with inside A to B equals CDs, not to confuse you. But here you can see, sure, you've got a confirmed one to 1.618 A to B equals CD uh, pattern out here along that C to D leg. So, yeah, we've got bottoming signals that we should at least get a counter trend move. Now, let's go back to. Oh, I know what I want to do. Let's go back to my white background screen. What I want to do is the following. First, when we take a look at this daily time frame chart here for the NQ, we don't have any kind of a bottom signal, as we just covered. But if I switch over and I take a look at the actual cash indice, and I take a look at the NDX 100, you know, just give me a moment to pull these charts up. Where'd they go? Here we go. What you're going to see is in the NDX 100, it is in wave number seven, letter G. Oops, sorry, didn't get there. Uh, now you should see it. Okay, so the NDX 100 yesterday got to wave number seven, letter G. So we're going to open higher. Probably don't attack yesterday's low. That'll confirm that seventh wave move. And on the daily time frame for the NDX, by the way, its price target is going to be the oscillator and change lender to 12,473 level. Um, and uh, I'm just looking at oh, the NASDAQ composite. It's also in wave number seven, letter G. So even though we don't have a bottom pattern there, completed A to B equals CD, we do have that bottom in type signal. And the same thing with the Russell 2000. So, yeah, everything is set up here so that we should see some type of rally. And that the rally that we're seeing today should be different than the type of intraday rallies or the rally that we began with uh, yesterday. Now, you would expect that we would still see some selling. And so if we go back, we take a look at the NQ charts out here quickly. What we're trying to find out is, is there any kind of a topping signal inside of the NQ? Get that chart up on the screen. We're looking at the intraday signals out here. The answer is as I speak, oh, that's natural gas. That's not gonna help me if we take a look at the NQ. So we'll just have to wait till we get back from that break. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. Be back in just a few. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my Gold Report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. 
Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the fund is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, uh, folks. So we're at that stage where we're trying to get granular here with regard to the NQ and just looking for signals. So instinctively, you know, my thoughts are that we should see some kind of a uh, sell-off. There, there should be – you should see some, uh, some bears try to uh, get in and, and short this uh, bounce that's out here. Understandably so, especially after this week. So I was looking for at 8.42 in the morning is any kind of signals of a at least some type of short-term top. And so we have two – Two signals here to take a look at. The 60-minute chart had a TD9 count top. It got negated uh, as we came on the air at 8 o'clock this morning. But it did that because it closed above that actual uh, high of the TD9 count, which was on the bar following bar number 9. So it negated that signal. That tells us about a strong momentum move to the upside. That would say, from a 60-minute standpoint, you may not see much of a retracement at all. And instead, price is just simply going to make its way up to the 12, 533 level. That's the next TD9 count breakdown area. However, there's another signal that's out here, and that's on the two-hour chart. And the two-hour chart uh, has confirmed a TD9 count top. It did that at 8 o'clock this morning. And <coughs> so... <coughs> coughs down. <coughs> so, even though we've got a negated TD9 count top on the 60, but the 120 says, oh, well, hold on here. What I'd be looking for, if there is a retracement, and there should be a retracement, would be a pullback to the 12084-ish area. See how on the 60-minute, I'll just expand out the chart. So on the 60-minute chart, we'll pull this back. We'll decorate this a little bit nicer. There we go. So when the oscillator and change line changes colors, typically what that tells us, when we get a topping signal, we should see price pull back to that level. So even though... That topping signal was negated, but the two hour says, hey, hold on a minute here. I'd expect price to pull back to that green oscillator and change on. If it does pull back there, test and rejects that level, that would be another bullish signal to suggest that price will start making its way up towards that 12, 553 level. What happens if price gets below that? No problems as long as price holds 12042, the bottom of that 60 minute profile. And if price were to break below that, then its next level of support would be down at 11,891. So those would be the areas that I would be watching and observing. There's nothing else out here on the intraday charts uh, that are going to really assist us. So let's go to our next question. This one coming in from Peak G in the uh, Tiger's Den. And Peak wants to take a look at the gold and silver out there. So to do that, do a couple of different things out here. One, we're going to go switch over to my black background charts. Then we'll go to the uh, multi time frame gold charts that I have there. But to answer your question, has gold bottom? Gold has not given us a bottom signal just yet. And what I mean by that is here we go. What we can see is that gold has now attained the one to one A to B equals CD to the downside peak. That price projection was 1812.60. And while it's doing that, we're trading right now at 1811. While it's doing that, on a weekly basis, price is pulled back into its bullish structured weekly profile. So from a technical standpoint, should gold bottom right here? The answer is yes. 
But do we have a con you know, because you're pulling back into it, but you're trading just slightly below the bottom of that bullish structured profile. But should we see a bottom here? The answer is we, we really should. Now we're gonna go in a moment and we'll go switch over to my multi time frame charts out there to see if we find any kind of uh, short term bottoming signals that would then confirm what it is that we should see a bottom. But your price closes below 18.15.60 today. That's the bottom of that weekly profile. That's going to suggest lower price. And what you and I know is in the A to B equals CD folklore language out there, um, we just use the projection areas. I use one, 1 1.272, 1.618. Some people use 1.382. It doesn't really matter because it's a price projection area. Once you get to the one to one level, then any bullish reversal candle after that, regardless of a price target, would confirm a buy the D point pattern out there. So should gold bottom? Yes. Has it bottomed? We have not gotten the signal. Now as we switch over, we take a look at the intraday charts, see if there's any kind of signals out there of a bottom. Because typically if you're going to see a bottom, think about this on a daily time frame, you're going to see bottoming signals or you should see bottoming signals on the intraday charts. So for us, the intraday charts that we use are 30 uh, 30 minutes, 60 minute, 120, 240, five hour time frame charts. That's what we have up on our screen out here. Well, the 30 minute chart is triggered erodes momentum indicator signal. What that needs peak is a bullish reversal candle to confirm its bottom. No bottom signal at all on the 60 minute time frame chart. Um, there really isn't one on the 120. I just wanted to open this up just a tad just to make sure of something. <laughs> You know, there's so many A to B equals CD patterns out here, but uh, do we have a bottom signal? All you've got is a hammer candle that formed out here at uh, 10 o'clock in the evening, and that's at 1809.10 or at 1809.70. So price closed below that 1809.10 level. That's a signal of price moving lower, no bottom there. The uh, 240 uh, is in bar, let me update this. Did it get there? Whoops. No. Yeah, no, it's it's so we are in bar number nine of a TD nine count. So the 30 minute has potential for a bottom. The 240 has potential for a bottom. This candle doesn't close till 10 o'clock, though. Those are the only two time frames out there. So it's a bit iffy, uh, quite frankly, with regard to uh, with regard to uh, gold out there, Pete. Well, how about for silver? Silver is also in an A to B equals CD to the downside. But I'll just switch over to the charts here. The silver signal on a daily time frame says that we should have a bottom that forms by today. And that bottom is a TD9 count pattern. So we're already below the low of yesterday. We've traded below the low of yesterday. Remember, on a TD9 count, that high or low needs to occur on bars 8, 9 to the bar following 9. So we're now, we're now into the bar following number 9. So whatever today's low is, peak, if we start trading below that Sunday, Monday, or what have you, then no this isn't a bottom and tells us about a strong momentum move to the uh, downside out here. But yes, silver is saying it should bottom. Gold is saying it should bottom. In the case of silver out here, as we take a look at intraday signals, its signals are better than ones that we took a look at for gold out there. So does silver bottoming ahead of time for gold? Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I, I, I'm, not sh I'm not sure of that. But Tom could probably better answer that question. But let's just look at each instrument separately, which we've done out here. And we should see a bottom pattern that it forms uh, by the end of the day here for silver. So I hope that helps you out with regard to uh, gold and silver. I think I've answered that all those questions for you. Um, let me see. Is there any other questions out here? I don't think so. So now the question is, so what else do we want to go look at? Let's go take a look at other instruments out here. We're going to start from, where are we going to start from? Let's go take a look at the 30-year treasury. So just uh, typical instruments that people would call about. So in the case of the 30-year treasury, what we can really see out here, just really the daily time frame, a couple of things. One, price right now is just consolidating with inside its daily profile. So that's all that's going on. This did form a wave number seven bottom. So here you can get to see we've talked about some wave seven bottoms out here, potential bottoming signals. So now you can see, you know, it in play out here. You can see how it has worked here. Uh, price just consolidating with inside its daily profile. Nothing really that's going on there. No breakdown, no breakdown. Does have a valid bottom. Now the weekly chart, this is interesting. It is in <coughs> It is forming bar number nine or trying to form bar number nine this week. In order for that to take place, price has to close below bar number, they could be below the close of bar number five out there. And that uh, close was at 141.01. So as long as the 30 year treasury 
closes below that level, 141.01, you're gonna get a, a confirmed TD9 count bottom. Now what that should do is take price up to its red oscillator and change line, it's a weekly chart. So don't expect like it's gonna do that in one single day out there. And price needs to close above the top of its daily profile to get up to the oscillator and change line on the weekly base. So you can see price on the monthly chart, right back at support, it's breakout level, 139.14. Be right back. The reality is that navigating financial markets can be risky. Markets can be chaotic and difficult to understand. Having the latest market advice can help you turn this chaos into a key for creating winning trades. At TFNN, we understand that it can be hard to find reliable market news. That's why each of our market experts offers their very own market newsletter. A must-have tool for every trader out there striving to find an edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets so you can analyze the market before you trade. Try any of our great newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Just visit the Newsletters tab on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. With market volatility roaring back in April, Larry Pesavento has just announced a five-hour live trading webinar coming up on May 17th. Larry Pesavento is a 56-year trading veteran and has mastered his trading skills through many different market fluctuations. Join Larry on May 17th as he hosts a live 5-hour trading webinar from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. Eastern Time, giving you insight into how he analyzes the market and decides his plays. Larry will delve deep into the ABCD trading pattern, explaining how to structure your trading day, the times most likely to generate signals, which signals to ignore, and how to use the pattern to mitigate risk. In this all-day 5-hour live trading webinar, take a seat by Larry's side as he trades the market markets real time, including the Dow and S&P 500 E-mini, crude oil, natural gas, gold, treasury bonds, wheat and soybeans, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar yen, and more. If you've ever wanted to get inside the mind of a market master, you cannot miss this live trading webinar. To sign up today, just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, uh, folks. Let's go out to the city of brotherly love and speak with John. John, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you today? Steve, uh, thanks so much for doing the show early and sure. under duress. No problem. Steve, uh, with the last two minutes, would you quickly just pull up on Tiger TV your uh, your charts for AI, that it, uh, ticker symbol AI, yep. um, and ticker symbol SNOW. I'm, uh, I know there are momentum divergences on various time frames forming. I'd like to see what your indicators say. I'm bottom picking in both of those. Yeah, so the daily time frame yesterday generated a Rhodes momentum indicator bottom with that uh, bullish piercing candle. And the price today can close about 1528. I believe pre markets are around, it's right around that level right there. If price can close above that red oscillator and change line, it would be signaling to us that we should see a move to 1794 to 1863. Any questions about that daily chart? Uh, no questions. I'll just listen. You go right ahead. 
Perfect. Okay. So let's. Uh, I'm going to switch over to take a look at uh, snow. So give me a moment here to do that, and I'll pull over the chart for that. And we're going to see, John, really the similar pattern with regard to yesterday confirming a roads momentum indicator bottom. Now, in the case of snow, the level that it needs to clear is 148.06, and it's at 147 right now. So right now we still have just kind of a counter trendish type move. But if you did get a close above 148.06, that would suggest to me that price would go target 177.13 to more likely 190.26. And that's what the daily time frame charts for both of those instruments show. So I'd say it's really all about the red oscillator and change line. And if price can close above both of those uh, levels out there, then you should have a further rally. Um, any other questions, John? Steve, thanks so much. Good weekend to you. Thank you. Same to you. And the same for everybody else out there. And folks, thanks so much for joining us live early. And if you're listening to the uh, to the normal show, hopefully this was helpful to you as well. Stay tuned. You've got great programming. Tommy O'Brien, if you're listening in at 8 in the morning, or David White at 1 o'clock. Have a fantastic weekend, folks. We'll see you on Monday.